you know, are you willing to risk everything to try to save this country? And I'm hoping that by me coming forward and doing the best I can and for surviving as long as I can, I will inspire other insiders and give them the courage and the hope they need to make that decision as well and see if we can't start making some progress against this thing. It's important to understand what the 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. We're told on the IEEE beam forming document that this technology cooked your eyes like eggs in World War II. Voice to skull, hive mind, behavior manipulation technology. And you all need to understand these are military weapons. These are assault frequencies. The true control grid is this technology. If you garner nothing more than that, that's what you need to know. It's microwave radiation warfare is what this is. Supercomputer software programming will manipulate the emotions and behavior and the thoughts of everybody in the United States of America. And it can all be done remotely. It's very much like the microchip kind of uh, tracking the New World Order, this entire, you know, uh, control grid that's supposed to be rolled out against the American people someday. And I'm here to tell you that uh, it's already here. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. The goal of creating artificial intelligence was for them to become gods, to create a collective mind, a global computer that sees all, sees everything, to, to create an all-seeing eye. In 2007, the Register reported that the Pentagon was developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman, and child on the planet. Blurring the lines between reality and artificial reality. It is called the Sentient World Simulation, a neural network with massive computing power. We're all collectively programming the AI and, the, the, and Google plus the, all the humans that connect to it are one giant cybernetic collective where we're all sort of plugged in as like, like nodes on the network like leaves on a big tree and we're actually building a computer that has real neurons in real time that's also psychically connected to us that are organic creatures a human mass machine interface dial it into all the other machines and computers and have a live time model of the world hooked into gps everything the internet of things to then be able to predict the future and then be able to control the future. We have to embody all our data and all our knowledge into a working model. It's like a Noah's Ark, it's like an archive. So the way we're going to do that is to build a kind of Microsoft for the brain or Google for the brain, where we're going to bring all the information that we have ever accumulated on the brain and bring it uploaded into this environment, organize it, and then we're going to develop algorithms that connect all of this data. We'll be able to start exploring and get inside the brain. You see, today I cannot get inside your brain to see how it works. I can measure it from the outside, but I can't get inside and look at what you see. But with this, you'll be able to step inside a brain and look at how it builds a world. The brain creates, builds, a version of the universe and projects this version of the universe like a bubble all around us. We want to be able to use those parallel universes to compute things that then come back and affect us and answer questions in ours. We want to grab those parallel realities from this abstract space in which they live and crunch them down into this chip. And you start thinking about us being the qubits in some massive giant quantum computing simulation. It's almost as if they're either trying to harness or to recreate what is commonly referred to as a collective consciousness. 
And uh, in conventional computing in software, these things are often called neural nets. Uh, we have a hardware version up in our head, it's called our brain. Um, the chips that we build are architected like neural nets. There are hardware versions of neural nets. They can literally plug you into the internet, which is just to give you a very simple way of, of understanding that. And what that uh, scientist there is describing now is the hive mind. Now, if people think this is somehow um, sci-fi or conspiracy theory, they're absolutely wrong and they're way behind this because this is here now, it's been done, it, it's been done in experiments, and it's been proven to work. And this is the technology, this is the first phase of technology that's going to come after the kind of uh, th the um, AI goggles, you know, the kind of Google virtual world stuff. After that is coming this stuff, and this is, this is going to come in a lot sooner than you think, and quite frankly, it terrifies me. Everything connected to the internet will be connected to the mirror world. And anything connected to the mirror world will see and be seen by everything else in this interconnected environment. This was a white paper put out by Purdue University in 2006 and the Sentient World Simulation, SWS, went live in 2007, which represents every person on the planet within this computer matrix as a node. And every node is given an avatar, an identifier. And that is real-time, 24-7 monitoring of every person on the planet. What does it take to uh, actually lock onto a target? Do they have to decode somebody's energy signature? How exactly does that work? Yeah, you're asking great questions, and i got to be careful what I say, but the, the person's brain print, their, their particular energy signature, just like a thumbprint or something like that, needs to be collected before the long process of retraining the brain to listen to a computer. The way it works is a device broadcasts a radio frequency, let's say at an individual, and that radio frequency will hook up with the resonance frequency of the individual's mind or body, or in this case, DNA. And they do this by contracting uh, with labs. Labs like LabCorp, Quest Diagnostics, et cetera, et cetera, who provide lab services for employers who are doing massive amounts of drug tests and blood tests, and also uh, the involvement of sperm banks uh, was mentioned in some of the information I saw uh, working for my company. These are perfect ways to acquire an individual's DNA, build a DNA profile on them, and then this information, the DNA of the individual, is used to determine the resonant frequency of the DNA itself. The resonant frequency is then used to fine tune the technology, the radio frequency signals, the microwave auditory effects, and all the other aspects of the technology to tune it perfectly to the resonant frequency of the targeted individual's DNA. This is one of the reasons why many targeted individuals believe that there are nano technology, nanobots inside of their body smart dust, things of this nature, nanofibers that completely fill the target's body. And based on some of the scientific papers that I've seen written on this, this is possible and it is going on. Uh, but it is a lower form of the technology. It is a less advanced form of the technology. The true holy grail in terms of this technology is DNA resonant frequency. It taps right into the DNA and it does it remotely by resonating with the exact frequency that your DNA resonates. In an internal memo dated December 20th, 2019, Pentagon leadership urged military personnel not to take DNA tests, warning that they create security risks and could negatively affect service members' careers. The memo noted that the tests could potentially create unintended security consequences and increase the risk to the joint force and mission. The memo specifically mentioned using the DNA for mass surveillance and for the tracking of individuals without their awareness as a top concern. This memo seems to substantiate whistleblower and former private security industry specialist, Brian Coffrin's claims that the resonant frequency of the DNA is used to monitor, track, and control the minds of targeted individuals. What they do is they get your DNA, and then once they've got your DNA sequence, they can then go to a supercomputer and they can biocode 
directed energy attacks that will only go and bioresonate with your body. So that three people can be standing right next to you and nobody's going to feel the harassment except you because these signals are biocoded to your body's tuning only. And then they can send down B2K, they can send down any, any symptom they want because they're in full control of the bioresonance of your bioenergy. And what happens is once the resonant frequency is found in the targeted individual and the broadcast frequency matches up with that resonant frequency, those two frequencies interlock and they can be thought of as one frequency or one energy. And what happens is between the broadcast frequency and the individual that's receiving the broadcast frequency, once it's resonating, uh, once they are resonating together, a, a super highway of frequency along which information can be sent is created. And so you can think of it just like fiber optic cables that you use to send uh, signals over the internet that connect people to the internet. It's the exact same thing, only a wireless application of that. And so once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency um, and they resonate together, then you have a perfect uh, avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth. And that's exactly how they manipulate someone's thoughts. They send voices into someone's head. Uh, they manipulate their emotions. They manipulate their behavior. And then that's also how they receive back from the id individual in real time uh, the vital signs, the emotions, the thoughts, uh, what the person's seeing, what the person's hearing. And then all that information, of course, is rendered on a computer elsewhere uh, via software and it can be monitored and tracked in real time and we believe that this is going to begin to help us understand how we create perceptions how do we create the world that we live in we do not see with our eyes or hear with our ears we see with our brain you are not seeing me you are you are you are you're imagining me actually standing up here your brain is an imaginarium and it is building this perception and this way we'll be able to begin to understand it because of my responsibilities in surveillance as a otherwise normal security specialist uh, I was showed this technology at work and it was through the perspective of course of the camera and what I was told that it was obvious it was being uh, used through the eyes of the targets um, so I have seen it and it is absolutely remarkable. It's just like a first-person, you know, video game or something where you, you see right through the eyes of the individual. When we look through our eyes, there are photons hitting the outside of our face. They don't actually make it into the part that thinks. The part that thinks is looking at something else. It's looking at some kind of weird compressed signal. Basically, those optical signals are, are interpreted by the brain and then you, you perceive them as vision, you perceive them as pictures and so forth, but this is all uh, electrical signals within the brain. Uh, and so the exact same thing, the data is taken in through the eyes, and then your brain renders it in a visual form that you, we know as sight. The exact same thing happens with the computer. Uh, the data is sent to the computer, and then it is rendered uh, in the form of a picture that people can look at. Images, like vi natural images, like what I'm looking at, have so much structure that they can be shrunk and compressed into a very tiny, what AI people call, representation. So what our brains seem to do is build a very, very good compressed representation of the world, call it a model. So just like if I have a building and there's like a blueprint or a scale model of the building, imagine I have the whole world and all of its concepts and I shrink it down into this weird compressed representation so that it fits inside my brain. That same thing happens with the computer. Uh, the data is sent to the computer, then it is rendered. And from what I understand, that's where this technology is right now. The cutting edge is trying to marry, you know, the software that's used to render it on the computer and the actual uh, detecting of the signal and the hacking of the signal within the human mind. So we have the mathematics to make neurons come alive. We also have the mathematics to describe how neurons collect information and how they create a little lightning bolt to communicate with each other. And when they get to the synapse, what they do is they effectively literally shock the synapse. It's like electrical shock that releases the chemicals from these synapses.
and we've got the mathematics to describe this process so we can describe the communication between the neurons so there literally are only a handful of equations that you need to simulate the activity of the neocortex so you can think of the neocortex actually as a massive grand piano million key grand piano each of these neocortical columns would produce a note you stimulate it it produces a symphony but it's not just a symphony of perception it's a symphony of your universe your reality so the way that we can look at that is to ignore the neurons ignore the synapses and look just at the raw electrical activity because that's what it's creating it's creating electrical patterns so when we did this we indeed for the first time saw these ghostly like structures electrical objects appearing within the neocortical column and it's these electrical objects that are holding all the information about whatever stimulated it and then when we zoomed into this it's like a veritable universe so the next step is just to take these brain coordinates and to project them into perceptual space it can literally stop your own thoughts from happening and replace them with other thoughts uh, by sending thoughts to your head and it's so sophisticated that you cannot tell where these thoughts are coming from there's no way to to discern that they're coming from somewhere other than your own mind so you can imagine how bad this would be for people that don't even realize this technology exists and they're having these thoughts which they think are spontaneous because uh, being under the influence of this technology now, kind of having been on both sides of it, I am, I am just amazed um, at the way it works. And I know that the thoughts that they beam into your head originate from the exact same place in your mind that your own natural thoughts originate from. So if I didn't know I was under the influence of this technology, then I would have no idea that anyone was influencing my thoughts at all. And that's exactly what it can be used for. It can be used to sway people in terms of their opinion, to make them go along with a certain agenda. It can be used to turn groups of people or individuals against each other uh, for whatever purpose. The entire point of this uh, social engineering program that has been researched and developed for decades now, uh, the full intent within the program, everything that's planned going forward, the day-to-day -day attitude of all the people, is that this program is going to be rolled out nationwide and it will become the norm. Every man, woman, and child in America will be under the influence of this technology. And as you can see going forward, what's going to happen is a, is a dividing line is going to be drawn in America. And it's not going to be Democrat or Republican or black and white, rich, poor, you know, Jew, Gentile, religious differences, whatever it is. It's going to be based on who is on the right and the wrong side of this technology who is on the right and the wrong side of this program. And so if you are not a part of this program, then there is a very real risk that you are going to become a full-blown, 24-7 targeted individual. And this technology at that point, when it is nationwide, will be used by automated computer, supercomputer software programming uh, that will manipulate the emotions and the behavior and the thoughts of everybody in the United States of America. And it can all be done remotely. It's very much like the, the microchip kind of uh, tracking the New World Order, this entire, you know, uh, control grid that's supposed to be rolled out against the American people someday. And I'm here to tell you that uh, it's already here. There isn't going to come a day where there's troops in the streets and tanks rolling down uh, your neighborhood and riot gear and all this stuff we might have isolated incidents like that it might get that like that every once in a while but the the true control grid is this technology voice to skull hive mind behavior manipulation technology and it can all be done remotely it can be done simply by targeting you with the frequency locking into the resonant frequency of your dna and your mind and in that manner completely track and trace and control you